I am Robert Sumwalt. I'm a board member with the National Transportation Safety Board. And with me today is Dr. Dan Bauer. Dr. Bauer is the investigator in charge for this accident. Today is the first full day that our investigators have spent working on the accident. It's our first full day of boots on the ground. Uh, it's been a very busy day, but at the same time, it's a very productive day. We started out uh, at eight o'clock this morning with an organizational meeting. Our investigators consider the organizational meeting to be the most important in meeting of the field phase of the investigation. And this is where we designate parties to the investigation. We set the tone for the investigation and we lay out the protocols and the framework for how the field portion of the investigation and how the rest of the investigation, for that matter, will go. I mentioned the designation of parties. The NTSB designates parties to the investigation, those organizations that can provide technical expertise to the investigation. And the parties are the Federal Aviation Administration, UPS, National Air Traffic Controllers Association, the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, the Independent Pilots Association. And in, in accordance with international treaties, since the Airbus A300-600 is manufactured in France, in accordance with international treaties, the French equivalent of the NTSB, the BEA, Bureau Enquête d'Accident, has been named as an accredited representative to the NTSB's investigation. Airbus and the European Aviation Safety Agency are serving as technical advisors to the BEA. I think most of you know by now that the recorders were recovered around 11 o'clock this morning. It took investigators about three hours to locate them they were covered in hardened plastic, metal, and cargo. And they, as many of you have seen the tweeted pictures, they were blackened and sooted. And we are cautiously optimistic that we will be able to obtain good data from those recorders. They are being flown as we speak to Washington under the uh, escort of a federal official they should arrive in Washington uh, at the Washington National International or Washington Reagan Inter uh, Washington Reagan Airport tonight at about seven o'clock Eastern time. They will be met at the airport by an NTSB official and transported to the NTSB's headquarters, where our laboratory personnel will begin the process of opening the boxes and trying to extract data from them. As you can imagine, these boxes are are made not to be opened up. They're made to be withstand crash forces and heat. So therefore, it's a little difficult to get into them. We have to saw into them and cut into them, and that takes some time. And there's software that they have to use to, uh, to download the data. We should know tomorrow, and our investigators will work late tonight to open these boxes and to, and to attempt to download them. We should know tomorrow whether or not we have good data on these recorders. Our Systems and Structures Investigative Group, um, I mentioned yesterday that we've had excellent uh, assistance and cooperation from the state, local, and federal authorities. And an example of that would be that today, the Hoover Police Department flew their helicopter with an FBI photographer to conduct an aerial survey of the crash scene. Our investigative groups have documented the forward fuselage. They have documented the cockpit, the location of switches and controls. And we are in the process, as we speak, of documenting the positions 
of the flight controls on the tail surface of the aircraft. Our power plant group has found that the preliminary evidence indicates no evidence of an uncontained engine failure. There's no evidence of a pre-impact fire. And there is evidence of debris, ingestion of foreign debris, such as dirt and wood from trees. Now all of this is a preliminary look at the engine and the engine will be transported, both engines will be transported to the manufacturer for a complete teardown. But this is what our, our experienced power plant investigators are telling us that their preliminary investigation is finding. Our operations and human performance group, uh, we've, they have put in a detailed request to UPS for a number of crew related documents, including training records, flight schedules, employment records, and UPS is cooperating fully with us on those requests. Our maintenance records group will, will convene at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning in Louisville at UPS's maintenance headquarters to begin pouring over the maintenance history of the aircraft. And our air traffic control group, uh, they are, as we speak, interviewing the controllers that uh, that um, uh, operated that particular aircraft, the uh, controllers that, that controlled, worked that particular aircraft as it came inbound to Birmingham. We have obtained the radar data, which will show, which can be plotted to show the point in space, the time, the altitude, airspeed or ground speed. And so we've obtained that data. I want to emphasize that we are just in the very beginning stages of the investigation. Again, today is our first full day of the investigative activities. There's a lot going on. There's a lot to be done. But I think we are, are right where we should be at this point in an investigation. So that's the end of my prepared remarks. I'll be glad to answer your questions. Was this the aircraft's first attempt to land at the airport, or did they do a go-around? And uh, I have no knowledge that it was anything other than their first attempt, but we will be, uh, uh, our, I, we tried to call the guy, the, our, our investigators who's interviewing the controllers. Um, because th he's still working, we don't have all that information right now, but as information does become available, we will be laying it out for you. Thank you for your question. There's a question here. Is there any evidence of failure of the lighting on the runway? Um, we have no indications of that, but uh, that's one of the things we will be looking at is the lighting, the navigational aids associated with that runway. Uh, yes, sir. Um, with the east-west runway open at the time of this, or just so, so the east was the runway uh, which is designated as 624. Was that runway open? That is the longer of the runways here at Birmingham. Uh, was that runway open? It was closed. It was uh, no tammed or notice to airmen. It was uh, it was closed uh, that morning for um, for maintenance on the runway centerline lights. There's a question here. Well, I'm not going to speculate on that, but. Um, uh, the question is, uh, why was there debris in the engines? Um, it, it is indicative of, uh, of an aircraft, uh, uh, of an engine going through trees and, and striking dirt. So that's, that's the fact right there. So uh, is there any other questions? I'll take uh, two more questions. There's a question here. Can I discuss the, the layout of the, the wreckage and, and, and let me elaborate on the idea of no fire. When I talk about no fire, no pre-impact fire, I'm referring to the engines. So the engines, there was no evidence of a pre-impact fire with either of the two engines. Um, 
did that answer your question or, or was there more to that, that that you wanted? Okay, one more question. What's the, what will happen with the wreckage itself? What will ha happen with the wreckage itself after the NTSB is through with it, we will turn it over to to the airline, UPS, and then, then it will be uh, taken away, removed, and, uh, and stored. Uh, usually they are stored in an aircraft salvage yard. So uh, that's it. We will be uh, conducting additional press briefings. Um, you can follow us on um, NTSB's uh, Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at NTSB, or you can follow us on our webpage, www.ntsb.gov. Thank you very much.